kids get pushed, it don't get shooting. We rip the zone of zoo, we wear the red and blue. Guard is stealing, alley ooping. We rip the zone of zoo, we wear the red and blue. You have a it's time to own it. We rip the zone of zoo, we wear the red and blue. Hey Wildcats, I'm Lisa Lane and alongside me is my co-anchor Alex Budish. You're watching Cat Nation. We're going to be talking everything Arizona basketball this semester, Cats, and what better way than to start it off with the Territorial Cup and a home game against our rival, Arizona State. Alex, we're going to be facing a young Arizona State team tonight that is 8-7 and seven overall and 1-3 and three in conference play before they play their game on Wednesday night. They have some key players in Lockett and Kane that lead the team in scoring and rebounding, and two other players we're going to want to pay attention to are going to be Abbott and Six. All four of them we'll be talking about later on. Offensively, they're struggling as a whole, but this Sun Devil team is not one to be overlooked. They're looking for a conference win, and what better way to kick that off than by beating Arizona on the road? You're absolutely right, Lisa. Arizona State is a young team in need of experience, but they are explosive and dangerous. Definitely not a team to overlook, especially a rival game at home. Arizona, you ask? Well, they're coming into this game at 14-3 and 3 and 3-1 3 and overall in the Pac-10. You got the best player in the Pac-10, maybe one of the best in the country with Derek Williams on your side, who's really improved his three-point shooting and free throw shooting already. The Arizona Wildcats have improved their entire team chemistry and ball play as a whole overall, and they're looking good. But this game is important. You want to keep the flow going and the momentum going, and you need a big win over your rival this week. Alex, you mentioned the team improving from last year, and I think we can give a lot of credit to Sean Miller and his coaching staff. When you see that team out there, they're more confident and they're a strong, stronger team. I think the guys go out there to play and say, hey, Arizona basketball never left. The early wins really help build the team's confidence, and I think that's great, and I hope it carries on throughout the rest of the Pac-10 play. Additionally, this has been our best non-conference season in 11 years for Arizona basketball. And if you're a Wildcat fan, that is very exciting stuff. Now, I know everybody wants to get to the big matchup, ASU U of A. But before we do that, Alex, you had the opportunity to sit down with Sean Miller. How was that? It was amazing. It was really great of the coach to take the time out to talk with me for a minute. And I think the fans are really going to enjoy it. So let's check it out. What's up, Cats? I'm here with University of Arizona head basketball coach Sean Miller. Uh, we're going to get a quick interview going and ask him a couple questions. Coach, what are your feelings going into this year about the upcoming expansion on the Pac-12? Well, I don't think there's a better time to be a fan or a or a player or a coach in the Pac-10, uh, soon to be the Pac-12. You know, the fact that we've added two great institutions, two terrific athletic programs in Colorado and Utah, I think is half the story. You know, the other half is the fact that we've captivated Denver and Salt Lake City as part of the imprint footprint of the Pac-10 from a television perspective, and I think we're really positioned well. When you look at our conference, we really encompass almost the entire western half of of the United States and some of the great cities in our country. So, you know, as you look forward to seeing us more on TV and having an opportunity to, from a football perspective, to do some great things, and in co college basketball to do nothing but enhance a league that's already been terrific. Derek Williams, coming off an unbelievable year, Pac-10 Freshman of the Year. What do you expect out of him this season? Well, I expect Derek to be a better player, and I think he does too. He's had a really good off season. And that offseason started this spring, shot a lot of, lot of shots. Uh, to me, he's a more capable shooter from the three-point line. I think he has a chance to be a better free-throw shooter. Uh, and then in the summer, although he combined both staying here in Tucson, becoming a bigger, stronger athlete, you know, taking care of his body, he combined that with experiences where he traveled and played against some of the best players in the country, which for Derek I thought is necessary to allow him to really see that there isn't a big difference between him and some of the others that he's compared to. And it's that daily approach that's going to separate him eventually. Uh, this fall, you know, his leadership and just looking at him being a sophomore on our campus, both on and off the court, you know, it's the natural progression that you want to see. And, you know, for, for someone who had such an exceptional freshman year, you know, to me, I think Derek's capable of being better as a sophomore. Now, you also were a point guard at Pitt. What does that mean to you? How important is that position to you here at what we call Point Guard University? Very important. Not just because I played the point guard, but uh, it's college football. The analogy of having a great quarterback makes the game easy on a lot of people, including your defense. Mm -hmm. Having that point guard does the same thing in college basketball. And Momo Jones will be our point guard this year with Jordan Mays and potentially even Kyle Fogg pitching in. And you know, Those guys will progress. I have great confidence in them. 
But that position, taking care of the basketball, uh, defending the other team's really good perimeter players, being an extension of the coach on the floor, you know, understanding time and score, how much time is on the shot clock. You know, to me, they make the other four players' life easier or at times more difficult. And uh, so we're looking forward to, to Momo picking up where Nick left off. And I think like last year, he'll have his rough moments early on because it is a new role. But I have no doubt that he'll continue to develop and improve much like he did last year. Very good. What's the chemistry like overall with this team, you know, on and off the court? I mean, we saw them go through some tough times last year. It seems like they were building on that a lot. And now with the new guys coming in, what's, what do you think the chemistry is going on? <clears throat> well, in fairness to our chemistry a year ago, you know, I'm the fourth coach in four years. And, you know, you're a senior, Nick Wise. He's just getting to know his coach and staff. And, and yet he's been here for four years. Same thing with our five freshmen, although we were fortunate enough to have them as part of our first recruiting class. A lot of our relationships in our recruiting started very late in the game, in the spring of their senior year. You know, sometimes you recruit young people for two and three years, and that's before they ever step foot on your campus. So part of chemistry is just familiarity, having the experience, learning each other. And uh, a year ago, we went through a lot, some good, some not so good, but the fact that it remains the same from one year to the next, to me, helps everybody. And I think our team knows each other, knows our staff. Our staff knows them a lot better than at any time a year ago. Coming in after a coach like Lute Olson, what do you take from him to your own coaching? Well, I think Coach Olson, first and foremost, really was dynamic in his ability to recruit, and he recruited people. He didn't recruit just good basketball players, and he didn't recruit just the top 10 or McDonald's All-Americans. You can make the argument some of the all-time great players at this school were very unheralded before they came here. You know, players like Luke Walton, players like Gilbert Arenas, Steve Kerr. You know, you look at who they were coming out of high school and who they were when they left the U of A. It's a real testament to Coach Olson and his staffs how they developed their players, and yet how they never really got caught up in just recruiting the ranking of the player. Clearly, the other part of their ability to recruit was to recruit the very, very best. But, you know, he was dynamic in his recruiting, and then he had a great style, both how he coached and how his teams played. And, you know, for us, I have to be the best that I can be, but there are a lot of characteristics that you want to pick up that are easy and clear to see as the new coach. Great. Now, what are your initial reactions to the Zona Zoo? Zona Zoo is something that's spectacular that I think will even get better in the future. And I, I want to connect with them as the head coach. I want our team to connect to them as fellow students. And I want them to be proud of our team and understand that the impact that they make on game day in McHale, in basketball, you have about 17 a year. That home court atmosphere that, that they're responsible for because they're the heartbeat inside of the arena. When they're organized and they're out in full force and loud and together, the rest of the, of the arena follows. And it's what makes Arizona so special. You know, part of what you think about when you think about going to Arizona or coaching in Arizona, playing against Arizona, is what's it like inside McHale? And for the opponent, we want it to be a miserable feeling. <laughs> and yet sportsmanship involved in everything we do. But yet for the home player and team, you know, we want it to be one of the most special electric atmospheres in the country. And to me, the zone of zoo is what makes that happen. Is there anything that they can do to give the Arizona Wildcats a bigger home court advantage? Just do what we've always done, especially a year ago, and build on it. You know, look at every game the same. You only have 17 of them. Don't show up in full force for one more than the other. Because the one thing about a college basketball season, every game has equal importance. One that, in fact, you think you're supposed to win, there's a huge penalty if you don't. And the fact that of that game, making sure that we have a great atmosphere, whether it's in November or whether it's the final games of the Pac-10 season, we want that, that consistency. And I think when you look at the great programs in college basketball, when you think of Duke, what do you think of? Cameron Crazies. Cameron Crazies and Cameron Indoor Stadium. You know, when you think of, of Kansas, you think of Allen Fieldhouse. And, rock chalk Jayhawk at the end of games. Well, when you think of Arizona, you think of the environment here in McHale Center. And the Zona Zoo and our fans are second to none. Well, now, Coach, here at the Zona Zoo, we did want to give you your own Zona Zoo awesome. t-shirt. I'll wear it with pride. And we wanted to say you got the whole Zona Zoo watch. Is there anything you want to say to the, the student body at large? 
No, I look forward to seeing all of you in full force. There's no head coach in the country that loves the students more than me, and in particular, a student that's part of the zone of zoo. We're in this together. Thanks, Cats. Bear down. Well, that had to be fun for you, Alex, to sit down with Coach Miller. Always great to catch up with Coach. It's great to see that he has a game plan for this season as well as the distant future. Well, I know everybody's excited for us to break down that ASU U of A matchup. So let's start with some of the key positions. Point guard. Point guard's an interesting position this weekend against a big team like Arizona State. I know that Arizona is going to be sending out their sophomore guard Momo Jones, while Arizona State is likely going to send out their senior point guard Ty Abbott. Abbott is an explosive senior who has really become the on-court and off-court leader of a team desperate for experience. He's averaging 12 and a half points a game, two and a half assists and nearly three boards. He's really the emotional leader and the catalyst for the Arizona State team. Momo Jones, he's also in the same kind of position. His numbers have declined a little bit from last season, but he's become the on-court vocal leader of the Arizona Wildcats. Jones is putting up eight and a half points a game, two and a half boards, and nearly two rebounds. They both play a lot of minutes and they both have a lot of experience, so it's gonna be an interesting battle this weekend. Lisa, why don't you tell me about the shooting guard position? Well, Alex, Arizona is going to be sending out junior Kyle Fogg, and Arizona State will send out their sophomore, Trent Lockett. Kyle Fogg leads the team in assists, and he's an impact player for Arizona. Offensively, you feel his presence due to the fact he does have those assists, but he also has a quick shooting ability, which makes him a threat anywhere on the court. Defensively, he has 24 defensive rebounds and 17 steals. He's an in-your-face kind of player and really fun to watch. Lockett, on the other hand, leads Arizona State in rebounds, points, and assists, so Arizona is really going to have to pay attention to him on the court tonight. He averages 13.8 points a game and 6.5 rebounds. He was out for two games with a sp sprained toe. However, he's back tonight and ready to take on these Wildcats. I think it's also important, Lisa, to talk about the forward position. Arizona State's going to send out Rehard Kusix, and we all know Kusix is probably the most underrated and undervalued position on the Arizona State Sun Devils. An experienced player, he's one of the quickest shooters in the Pac-10. He can hit you from deep, and he can also drive to the lane and get early fouls on our big guys. You got to watch out for his explosiveness and his quick off the ball movement. He's going to be a big factor if Arizona State hopes to come away with this one. Now, I think we all know who you're going to talk about, but Lisa, tell us about our big forward. Well, our big forward is Derek Williams. He is one of the best players in the league right now. He averages 19.2 points a game, and he's a do-it-all player. He doesn't only dazzle us with his dunks, but he has the ability to shoot under the basket and beyond the arc. I really like his ability to draw fouls and take some quick mid-range jumpers. That helps our team all the time, and he's going to be really hard to cover for Arizona State. However, if they happen to be able to manage Williams, I think we have enough players that can step up and make things happen. Alex, tell us about some of those key players. Well, it's the key trio of things that we've seen all throughout the season thus far. It's Derek Williams, it's Momo Jones, and a surprise, it's Jesse Perry. These guys have been the ball movement, control, shooting aspect of our team already, and we look forward already going into Pac-10 play. Derek Williams, as you said, is a do-it-all player. He's the big man of our team. He's the heart of our team. He's the key player. However, Momo Jones, he's the guy that has to get you the ball. And Jesse Perry, well, he's come out of nowhere to show that he really wants to play and be the starter of this Arizona Wildcats team. Also important to know, Jamel Horn, yeah, he's also a star asset coming off the bench. When you have an 11 deep rotation like Miller uses, it's hard to stop a team that has this kind of speed. Look for the Wildcats to get out, use those three big players and a solid bench to come away with this one. Well, Alex, the game clock is ticking down, so we're going to have to wrap, wrap up tonight's show. But before you do, we want to remind you we have many traditions at this university, and bad sportsmanship is not one of them. So let's welcome all Arizona State fans to McHale tonight and show them why we're the very best student section in the Pac-10. For Cat Nation, I'm Lisa Lane. And I'm Alex, already getting my dancing lessons ready for March. Buddhist saying bear down, and we'll see you at the game. Kick it, push it, don't get shooting. We rep the zone of zoom, we wear the red and blue Guard is stealing, alley ooping We rep the zone of zoom, we wear the red and blue Man to man, a pressure zoning We rep the zone of zoom, we wear the red and blue You of A, it's time to own it We rep the zone of zoom, we wear the red and blue We rep the zone of zoom, we wear the red and blue